So in this video, I'm going to bring you through my entire Love Island journey from when I got the first message to go to the interviews till present day and everything that happened in between. Um, I'm going to do a complete transparency, complete honesty. Um, so yeah, if you're not a fan of Love Island, I stop watching now. <laughs> So you can get on Love Island in three ways. One, they find you on social media and send you a message. Two, they find you in person, kind of in and around the streets or maybe if you're a model or something like that. And number three is you can apply. They found my Instagram page. I don't know how because I had something like just over a thousand followers and I didn't post very much at all. I think I had like under 40 posts or something. Because the page was verified with a blue tick, I was like, oh, this must be serious. Um, and I was like, Joe you know, Adam might as well answer the message and see what they have to say, but like, I'm never going to end up going on the show. I had a phone interview with them then, and it went well. They ask you loads of different stuff. Um, quite informal, but like loads of questions just to find out who you are. So that was fine. And then they invited me to go to the next interview. I had an in-person interview there, but still quite informal, just in front of a camera. So anyway, I went back home, went back training. A couple of weeks went by, I got a phone call being like, Hi Greg, we'd like to invite you over to London to meet the executives and the producers. And I was like, uh, okay, when? <laughs> Flew over, met them. Um, another informal chat kind of in front of cameras and whatever. Still not thinking ever I'd ever get into the villa. Um, came back home, went back training, do my normal life. And I get a phone call being like, Hi Greg, um, we'd like to congratulate you and offer you uh, the starting lineup for Love Island. <laughs> and I was like, oh really? Um, uh, to be honest, I I can't really do it because <laughs> I have rugby commitments and I'm not available um, to do anything until the 15th of July. And um, they were like, oh, okay. Uh, well, do you want to fly over to London anyway and get your medical and meet with the executives and stuff? So I was like, all right, okay. So flew over, got my medical, met the executives and the producers. And they were like, look, how can we work this out and get you to go into the villa because we really think you'd be good in there. And I was like, look, I would love to go in there. I'm a big fan of the show, but I just can't. I have other commitments. I have my rugby stuff and I have my studies and everything. And I'm, thanks, but no thanks, I can't do it. Um, so we shook hands, we went our separate ways. I went back home, didn't tell anyone except my family and my best mate. And I started watching the show day one like everyone else, watching people walk into the villa and I was like, Jeez, I could have been one of them. <laughs> That's funny. But life goes on and there's no point dwelling over it. So, five weeks of the show go by and I get a call from Love Island and they're like, look, we really like you to go on the show. How can we make this work? And I'm like, look, I'm going to France this weekend playing an Olympic qualifier. I can't go, I'm sorry. And they're like, what if we fly you from France? And I was like, yeah, but that's past the deadline for you having contestants come in. I'll have less than two weeks in there. And they're like, look, that's fine. We'll just work it out. So, I went to France with the team, didn't tell anyone. I filled my suitcase with all like my maid's clothes because I didn't have any nice clothes. Obviously, look at me, I'm just wearing like a, a crap uh, plain black top now. Like I'm not really into that designer clothes stuff. Took all my maid's clothes, filled my bag, and then just layered the top of the bag with rugby gear. Um, went to the tournament, played the tournament, and we finished and I got back to the hotel. I packed up all my stuff and I was leaving and I said to my roommate, and I was like, uh, look, yeah, I have to go home, my, uh, my grandmother's sick and I have to get back as quick as possible, <laughs> which I feel so bad about now, but I just couldn't tell him, you're under contract not to tell anyone. Anyway, I flew straight from France to Mallorca um, and then Monday morning then I filmed all like the walk in the cliff and the introduction to me and all that stuff and then and Monday evening I went into the villa. So it was all so quick, like I didn't do really any lockdown, so that's why I had like a terrible like uh, sleeveless top tan, I had a crap haircut, I had cuts all over me, like I looked terrible and I was going into the villa to these unbelievable looking guys like Ovi and Tommy and Jordan and Chris and Anton and I was just coming in like a paddy strolling in with my crap tan and crap haircut, it's so funny. So anyways, it's Monday evening and I'm going into the villa and they asked me who do I want to go on a date with, so I choose Amber. We go in and we had a date in the hideaway and we hit it off straight away, like first minute, we're getting on like we've been mates for years. 
And then I go down and meet all the other Islanders and honestly it was like meeting TV stars. Like, I, Cause I've been watching the show I remember for six weeks, like everyone else like a fan and now I'm in here and I'm meeting everyone like Ovi and Chris and Tommy and Molly Mae and everyone and I'm just like, this is nuts. Um, so I did the first kind of week in there, just kind of minding my own business, doing my own thing, staying quiet enough because I just didn't want to be like pushing my weight around or whatever. Um, and after the first week, unfortunately, um, my grandmother actually passed away at home. So ITV very nicely let me leave the villa and I went home with two bodyguards um, went straight to the funeral and buried my nana who was lots of love and miss her and sorry I wasn't there for the last couple of days. Um, uh, a very nice thing actually is that the nurses that were taking care of her told me that um, on the night that she was passing that they turned on the telly and put on Love Island and I was on it and um, so she would have heard me in the background um, on the last night that she was she was around so that was kind of nice to hear and ITV were so nice they said I could stay at home with my family and didn't have to come back to the villa and it'd be completely okay they understood but my family were like why would you not go back in what are you gonna do just sit at home with us here and be miserable and watch Love Island anyway so <laughs> I went back on the plane straight after the funeral back into the villa and I missed a full day filming, um, so you probably noticed one of the episodes I'm not in it at all. So anyway, I got back into the swing of things and just doing my couple of days in there. And let's be honest and call a spade a spade here. Amber had been in there for six weeks and been on an emotional roller coaster, been through a lot, and a lot of people had kind of fallen all over their story. And I just came in at the end and I just kind of did my thing and we got on really well. And people just kind of took a liking to us and we ended up winning the show, which was nuts. I never ever thought I'd even get into the villa let alone end up winning it and I always said to myself no matter what happened if I did end up going into the villa and whatever happened in there I was always coming home to try and qualify for the Olympics because what people don't realise is that I've worked my entire life to try and become a professional rugby player and even though I've had a lot of setbacks and I had a big um, injury that lacerated my Achilles and really messed me up. Um, I still had this opportunity to go to the Olympics and I was like, why would I throw it all away for 13 days on a TV show when I've worked so hard for so many years. Um, so I was always coming home no matter what. So I go back home and I'm getting ready to go back full time training and there's a million and one other things going on that I was never ready for it. It's all great stuff but I'm just kind of getting a bit overwhelmed by it all and Amber's over in the UK doing her thing and she's loads of stuff going on and it kind of got to the stage. We kind of had a couple of FaceTime calls and messages back and forward. We were chatting and we were like should we take it from exclusively dating to boyfriend and girlfriend and I'll be completely honest I couldn't see how I was going to be able to make her happy like she deserved when I was at home in Ireland trying to train to go to the Olympics and I had everything else going on around it and she had all her stuff going on and I was just couldn't figure out in my head how I was going to possibly be able to give her the happiness that she deserves and make it work properly. So I kind of came to the conclusion that I was like, look, maybe we should just leave it here before we get in too deep. And we went our separate ways and a lot of people hate me for it and they're like, you're this, you're that, every name under the sun. I, go, I was getting sent death threats. People step by step telling me how I should go and hurt myself and oh my god, some of the most ridiculous stuff I've ever been sent in my life. I don't know how people can even create that in their mind. And my family were getting threats and I was getting ab abuse just non-stop every minute for weeks. Like it was crazy. Um, and I'd like to sit here and be like, oh it didn't affect me, I'm tough. But like it did. It got at me when millions of people are telling you you're a piece of crap, you're worthless, you don't deserve anything in life, you're all this, when all, all I did was stick to my principles and my values and decide myself that I wanted to follow my dream of getting to the Olympics and being a professional athlete and I couldn't see how I could stay in a relationship and make her happy so yeah it was my decision but I stuck to my principles and that's it and we've spoken since me and Amber and privately and we both agree that there's no hard feelings and we wish each other the absolute best of luck and we know we get on very well but it just wasn't going to work at the time and she's amazing she has everything going for her she deserves everything she's getting um, and yeah she's an amazing girl and I wish her the best of luck so there's no hard feelings between us so all the people that still abuse me every day obviously there's there's big history there in Love Island of of people struggling with mental health so 
hopefully people watching this video can kind of uh, acknowledge that and realize that words do hurt and you never really know the full picture and to really think before you speak because um, you never know how much effect you're actually having on someone. Um, so anyway, to move on from that kind of um, very serious note, so what happened then was I went and just followed my Olympic dream and I kind of took anything that worked in and around that training schedule. So I was on the radio for a couple of months, I had a TV show for a couple of months, I bought her deals going on, but basically I kind of threw away the golden ticket of moving to the UK and signing with all these brands and taking all these big contracts which I said no to um, because it just didn't sit with me right and even though I'm missing out on a lot of money I'm happier and I'm happier with my decision on what I'm doing and, and no one can say I was chasing the money because with the Sevens Rugby it is definitely not financially lucrative. I actually made more money in the 13 days I was on Love Island and then in a whole year I do playing rugby but I'm happy and at the end of the day uh, happiness is the most important thing and having the right people around you and money's great but it doesn't bring you everything and if anyone ever has the opportunity to go on Love Island I'd 100% recommend it but don't think it's going to change your life or it's going to make you this big celebrity you want to be. It might happen and it happens for like a very small percentage of Love Islanders but otherwise it's just a great experience, great experience to meet people, uh, just be careful. There's a lot of positives and a lot of negatives that go with it. So yeah, that's my Love Island journey. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoyed it and kind of took something from that. Uh, lots of love, I'll talk to you soon. Keep safe and stay well.